podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. What's up? How's it going? It's going. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, um, it's another D&D episode today. Yeah. So uh, y'all, y'all locked in. Can you tell in. how excited I am? Spencer, what's the, what's what's going on? You don't like D&D anymore? I've had enough. You've had enough? Yeah. We only, we do one a month. Yeah. And it's for the views. That's why everybody's here. You Hi. can't, people come into this podcast to hear your your opinions and your thoughts and value you as a as as somebody that that they they love to watch to entertain them. Yeah. I'm so glad we have a podcast. I'm so well spoken. Yeah. Yeah. I love having a podcast. Yeah. No, I mean really though, like you just you just been real apathetic lately. Is that like about Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I guess. Uh I don't like when things change. Yeah, that's fair. Even if it's for the better. Yeah. Wait, what? Like, even if it's better. Spencer, no. Yeah. Things have to change sometimes. Mm, I don't like that. Spencer, no. <laughs> Spencer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, get over it, basically. Yeah, I will uh, have to. Wow. <laughs> wow. Because wow. uh, we're going we're gonna to look at some stuff. And we're also going to answer some questions. We're going to do some typical God. podcast stuff. But, Damn it. Um, I wanted to kind of go over these in like a XP to level three video, but I've been making too many of them. So yeah. I'm gonna make something different and do these here. We'll get some people to watch the podcast. I thought that would be fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, please, no more implants. Who did that. this art? It was on Twitter. It's a uh, funky flame. Go check them out. They have cool art. It's, um, it's for all the audio listeners. Um, you know what? It's a special treat for the video watchers. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's what it is now. Anyways, uh, what in general have you guys been like? Have you seen anything recently from the new rules that you're like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool? Because people have been getting the book from Gen Con mm-hmm. and have been like reading through it and flipping through it. Yeah. Specifically, uh, uh, Jor- Dorfton. Jorfton, the yeah. PH is silent. And then Watsy copyrighted his whole video? Yeah. They, they fixed it. They did fix it. They fixed but it. those bastards. It was just a miscommunication. Nearly sent the Pinkertons after him. Yeah. There was a miscommunication between Watsy and Hasbro. And so I think Hasbro's the one that copyright struck it. And then, yeah. Hasbro, when I catch you, Hasbro. Yeah. God damn. It sucks. Um, but glad his video isn't copyright claim anymore that was like a strike on his channel that yeah. level yeah. of copyright i've never gotten that in my mm. years of youtube that is insane well he's reviewing a product that's not out yet so they well they fucking gave it to him yeah, i know it's out yeah i know it's just ridiculous mm-hmm. just stupid they should have had that on lock um anyways uh other than that though uh, I haven't really I haven't looked through the book I haven't watched somebody flip through the whole book yet I'm gonna wait until I mm-hmm. have it yeah. But uh, what, is there anything anything you guys have been like? That's cool. I like that. No. Nothing. Nothing, Spencer. Some of the sorcerer stuff was fun. Some of the. All right. Warlock is pretty good. You told me monk's pretty sick. Yeah, monk is really but good. I haven't read it myself. It's amazing. Okay. It's dare I say, revolutionary. You and Mia were <laughs> were pretty happy. Dare about I it. say, it gave me hope. Me, after it not only made me I, I still feel terrible about ranger but i felt bad like i was like i don't want to use the new rules yeah. and monk made me go i do want to use the new rules see. <laughs> i want i will I give it made me yeah. want to go not only am i like not am not not only do i want to use them i want to give new ranger a shot that's how good new monk is anyways pepper no. you uh no nothing yeah, nothing no Guys, I can't do this. I can't. What, what, you can't come out here and well, say you're nothing. Gonna, you're, you're here to show us yeah, cool stuff. I'm, I'm not. I haven't even Perform. read this. This might be ass. Well, then, just bum everybody out. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I did want to read one small thing from an article they released today. Today as in the, with the day we're recording this, which yeah. is a week before. Um, but they made like an what? article what? which was about... Uh, you like making a character, mm-hmm. and uh, they have a section talking about backgrounds, um, for or using backgrounds and species from older sources. And it says if you want to use an older character origin option, no problem. The twenty twenty four player's handbook has rules for converting these options to be compatible with the new rule set. 
that's cool. They well, made yeah. rules so that you can use old stuff. So that gives me hope. Yeah. That still continues to give me hope that like you can use old stuff in it because it start at first I was like yeah no who cares mm -hmm. but then when I was reading some of the classes I was like uh oh this doesn't seem very backwards compatible but now it does so I don't know a lot of speculation but it's all gonna mean nothing once the book is out and I'll get to read it mm -hmm. but yeah yeah I will say a a lineage or a background does not make a class those those are infinitely more complex that's true. Convert than a lineage which yeah. may be four paragraphs yeah if oh that, i see like the like dampier yeah like conversion because that, that that's what you're saying right yeah it says it's, like it's, using, it's just, using background just, species yeah yeah th those are pretty generic things that i imagine are going to be easy to convert mm -hmm. yeah. that's not a subclass no yeah that's true i mean like what most that's a couple of paragraphs for the most complex lineage or species you have to deal about yeah it's about it i i mean you kind of just plug in damp here already to like when when you make a character that's, so like, i don't think that's what they're saying oh sorry Am said I? it's super easy to just plug in any oh, old race yes but right. it's yes. not gonna mean shit when we want to put an old subclass or an old class into no i don't yeah, think so, so yeah. backwards compatible for one thing uh, that's almost expected yes yeah, yeah. but Got it. I can't imagine a class, a, a subclass, is going to be as easy as that. Yeah. That makes sense. But they've also not said it's, it, it's, they've alluded to it being possible. They've not really said yeah. it's possible for sure. Um, but I guess we'll find out. But no, they they released one that was uh, four key changes to spells in the twenty twenty four players handbook, oh, and um, I I skimmed it. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty cool. Okay, I figured we could run through it real fast and just give some of our some of our opinions. How much time do you want? And then uh, I want thirty minutes. Not e maybe not even that. Okay, I'll give you fifteen. Fifteen? That's half. You, you said... cut me by half. We can't read this in fifteen minutes. Okay, twenty minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, that are that are cool. I skimmed it. It seems pretty neat. They don't go over all the spells, so I don't know what all the changes are to spells, but they do point out some pretty cool ones. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, let's see what they got here. So, um, this one is the beginning of it. Basically, says magic is a cool thing in D and D, and I'm gonna skip it. Um. And then the next part says, save $60 when you pre-order the, and we're not going to read that. But then the next part says, one of the first things that long-term D&D players will notice when peru perusing the almost 400 spells in the 2024 Player's Handbook is that many of your favorite spells have been buffed up. Your healing spells will keep you and your allies on your mm. feet to reflect the cost of your action or bonus action and your spell slot in order to use them. For example, Cure Wounds now heals a base of 2d8. Plus your spellcasting modifier and healing word similarly has a base of 2d4 plus your modifier as a level one spell, which is pretty cool. They bo oh. b they buffed both of those by yeah. a whole dice, mm -hmm. which I think is really worth it because cure wounds, in my opinion, has never been worth it. It's all yeah. it's almost yeah. it's almost exclusively like a, I do it outside of combat spell. It's like well I've got nothing else to do in my turn. I guess I'll cure wounds, but yeah. healing word has always been the. The Sigma that's, spell. That's probably to say for most large or smaller healing spells that are probably under 18 hit points, yeah. maybe. It's probably, you get caught, you hear a lot of healers talk about it where you get caught in the thing where it's not efficient to say, to give you health. It's yeah. efficient to raise you from one. Yeah. Or from zero. From zero. And that's the better way to do it. That's even, that's even the, the way to do it in Baldur's Gate 3. I've been playing it again recently and um, it has been... I, every time I'm like, nope, I'm not going to heal this turn because I'm just going to wait until they're down because yeah. then it's actually worth it to heal and I'll yeah. just get you back up. Like um, one of the major moments where I feel like that was like uh, a thing in game was when we were fighting um, Oral for like the, f mm. I don't know even what yeah. time it was, but yeah. it was like for immolation, it was like, it is more worth it for me to raise you from the dead yeah. than to waste my turn getting you up and not fighting her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. Crazy. Um, so I like that they're, they're, they're boosting it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Cause at level one, basically cure wounds is going to give most characters their full hit points unless yeah. they roll like shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, and it's not just dice increases. Many spells receive a new element of functionality. Prayer of healing, which takes 10 minutes to cast now grants the benefit of a short rest up to five creatures mm. in addition to restoring 2d8 hit points. That's good. Whoa. That's pretty good. good. That's really good. Oh my gosh. 
I, I love that. That's really cool. Uh, damage dealing spells have ha have seen several boosts too. Cloud of Daggers used to have some diminishing returns on later rounds if enemies started to avoid your cube of swirling stabs. Swirling stabs. Swirling stabs. But that's a thing of the past because now you can use a magic action on your later turns to move the cloud up to 30 feet. That's really mm. cool. I like that a lot. That's a magic action? Yeah, so there are the there's the attack action and the magic action. The magic action is uh in, so in in 2014 player's handbook spells would cost an action. Mm -hmm. Now you have to spend the magic action to do the spell. Unless the spell is like a bonus action, then mm -hmm. it's just a bonus action. But there are special I think there's going to be new rules about how you use the magic action and things like right. that. Right. To get around like action action surge type thing i think or? so yeah because i think oh, that's I, lame I, that, that is dumb let me look assuming that's that's the reason yeah. if it, it is if it is to bounce or around, like haste haste or um or i think action it is surge, that is that is that's ass my guy that's bad <laughs> that's, that's ass bad. my guy <laughs> if anything i was almost excited yeah that magic action meant two spells in a turn kind of shit yeah well we'll see um let me look at what fighter says because i want to find out what exactly I don't think they detail action surge. No, they don't. Probably not. Well, so we'll see when it comes out then. I can imagine that's true though. Yeah. I can imagine it's be like, you can take another attack action and it's like, that's, well, well, I don't know. Because the, because in, in current fighter, it's another action. You can do a lot more with just an action than just attack. So yeah. yeah. You can like cast a spell. Right. Well, but you could it, also dash. Yeah, yeah, but if it doesn't specify in the new rule book that you can take the magic action, then you can no longer cast a spell. I believe that was in the Unearthed Arcana for Fighter, that it just said attack action and everybody was upset about it. Right. But I think they didn't specify with new Fighter, so I don't know. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. But yeah, that would, yeah, I that would suck. Yeah, I silly. I, I could almost see it being like a you can counter spell anything that costs, takes the magic action because there's also abilities that use the magic action. Oh, so, so no more spell-like abilities? Yeah, I think it's like if you take the magic action, that's how you do it. But I don't know. It could really not provide much change. But anyways, um, similarly, Chromatic Orb has been updated with the potential to strike an additional enemy, really embracing the dodgeball vibe of or chucking a magically infused sphere at your enemies. I think I meant to say of, but it like said Chaos or. Bolt? Um, yeah, but I think it, yes, like Chaos Bolt, I think it just says an additional enemy. Oh. Chaos Bolt can potentially kill, because theoretically going. kill everyone in the world who is in range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If it kept doubling, yeah. you would just kill everybody. Including yourself. Including, that's true, <laughs> yeah. oh my god. Come back yeah. and target you. It Car can. Chaos Bolt's such a good spell. It is. It's a it's number a of spell. spells that saw little use from the 2014 Player's Handbook have also seen some tweaks to make them more functional and enticing for you to add to your repertoire. Blade Ward, for example, was a fairly underused mm -hmm. cantrip because mm -hmm. it cost an action, mm -hmm. only lasted a turn, and only granted resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for that one turn. Now, while it takes a magic action, this cantrip lasts for a full minute, with concentration and forces enemies attacking you to subtract 1d4 from their attack roll for the duration okay. that's really good is it only it's like self? Hmm? is it only self it's only self hmm. um is, but is it still a cantrip it's still a cantrip okay that's it's a bad. minute long concentration cantrip that um i think the d4 might scale I could imagine so. That yeah. would that would make sense. Like 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 cantrips do. Yeah. That's, that's not terrible. It's not bad. But not I terrible. mean, you could also cast it before combat. It does have concentration, so and it's, it's like, also only a minute, right? Uh, yeah, but you could cast it before combat and then get into combat and have it. Like I do that with Cayman. Like I yeah. did that with last game of Spelljammer. I'm like, hey, bef while I'm in the trunk of the car, can I, can I do this? Yeah. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Um, it's definitely better than what it is than now. It was, yeah. Um, yeah. These are just a few changes. Blah 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 blah. All right. Um, the next part says it's easier to find and use your favorite spells. It's um, cool art. And the art is pretty cool. Look at, look at this. Look at, sorry, audio oh, listeners. Yeah. It's very cool. All the art from the new book's amazing. It's amazing. I look. I skimmed solid. through the species one today, and there's one of a bunch of tieflings sitting at a table, and it's. I mean, I love it so much. Speaking of looking up your favorite spells, 2024 Player's Handbook promises makes the process of finding, preparing, and using your spells as a player easier. Now you no longer need to flip to the back of the book to see what spells are available for your class. Each class has its designated spells listed in the class description for the class itself oh, in the character good. classes chapter. So if you're building a cleric, the list of cleric spells is right there in the, in the same section as your class. 
That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Um, one of the big missions in revisiting spells was to really listen and to address questions and confusions players have had around various spells in the decades since the 2014 Player's Handbook was first published. We tightened up the wording and some spell descriptions to make them clearer and more... S- 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 what is this word? Succinct? Succinct? Succinct. Thank yeah. you. Succinct. Succinct. I, no, no, actually right. It, it, it is not suck it. Suck it? Yeah. Thanks. Without changing the actual mechanics of the spell. We provided more artwork of the spells in, in use That's in, good. to give you more inspiration for imagining yeah. how the spell looks when you cast it. Yeah. The ritual tag has now been moved to the casting time, so it's easier to find stuff. Cool. cool. As an example to as an example of changes to spells, the conjuring family of spells such as Conjure Fey and Conjure Celestial have been updated to officially reflect popular modifications that were playtested in Unearthed Arcana. The new versions of the spells now give you all the information you need when casting them in the spell descriptions themselves. Like what damage they can deal or what the save DC is for their, their abilities. This saves you from cracking open the monster manual to track your contra creatures information to make and makes them operate more similar to spirit guardians or spiritual weapon spells. Mm-hmm. That's great. Good. Love, that. Love that. Um, and then there's another piece of art here with, um, like a fucking fire tornado destroying a bunch of rocks, which is also fun. That's very good. Yeah. Very cool. Solid. The art's my favorite. I don't part. think those are rocks, are they? Those are v- rocks. Oh, rocks. No, not I rocks. I just said no. rocks. They're rocks. Rocks are a type of demon. Um, the 2024 Player's Handbook introduces brand new spells. Some, like the Starry Wisp Cantrip, were included in the Unearthed Arcana playtest, but some weren't and will be making their debut in the 2024 thingy. Um, thingy. Some of the brand new spells include ties to known spellcasters, uh, like Tosh's Bubbling Cauldron, which creates a magical cauldron for 10 minutes that you. And your allies can reach into and grab vials of common or uncommon potions of your choice. Whoa. Jalarzi, a celestial patron warlock with the distinction of being a non-wizard member of the Circle of Eight, has a powerful namesake spell, Jalarzi Storm of Radiance. This spell creates a raging 40-foot cylinder storm that deals radiant and thunder damage. That's what that art is. Um, it also gives creatures within it the blinded and deafened condition and makes them unable to cast spells with a verbal component. That's cool. So how I should get that? Yeah. Oh my God, really? Uh, popular spells from the expen- uh, expanded source books have also now become a part of the course, a part of the core spell list, like Toll of Dead. Um, and that is kind of all that says. And then this is my favorite art of, of this post, which is this dude doing like this AOE, uh, like... Like it, mm. it looks like a turn undead, mm-hmm. but maybe it's a spell. It looks really cool. Yeah. And he's getting like attacked by like undead or something, and they're like swarming him. They're catching on fire. It's really cool. It is very cool. Uh, emanation is a new area of effect, joining known types like cone, line, or sphere. An yeah. emanation spell extends in a straight line in all directions from a creature or object and moves with them if the spell duration is longer than instantaneous. Cool. Emanation differs from a sphere and yeah. that the point of origin is not considered a part of the area of effect. Known spells such as Thunderclap and Spirit Guardians are now classified as emanation for their areas like of that effect. Thunder. That makes a lot more sense. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all they detailed in there, which was... Um, Pretty. I like the emanation thing. They they have a similar thing in Pathfinder called yeah. the burst. And um, I think emanation is also a thing in Pathfinder. Well, freaking. Or that it specifies that it emanates from an area. That's true. Or from yeah, yourself. Yeah. I think it. Yeah, you're right. Emanation. Yeah. I think is totally a thing in there. I was just thinking of burst because I think burst is cool. Burst is cool. It's cooler than saying radius. Yeah. It's like burst. Yeah. I like that. Um. Pretty cool. There's like 400 spells, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Um. They didn't really go into too much detail about how they're. D- differentiating between the three types because yeah. they did that in Earth Arcana. So I wonder if that's not going to be like that big of a thing as it was in Earth Arcana. Especially because they're putting the spell lists mm-hmm. of everybody in their class areas. I think initially the impression I got from Earth Arcana was that they weren't going to have spell lists and they were going to do it like Pathfinder where it's like you can cast arcane spells, you yeah. can cast uh, primal spells and you can cast holy whatever that one was divine, uh, divine spells but mm-hmm. I don't think they're doing that I think they're they're going cleric fighter fighter cleric druid wizard all those kinds of spells so yeah yeah I like that the healing spells get a boost I'm excited to see what's in there um, that one spell is crazy the one where you can <laughs> the Tasha's one where you can just yeah. pull Potion. out potions potions yeah. that's wild that makes sense yeah um, yeah so Sounds some good. cool exciting stuff yeah. we'll see um uh we'll read through it find out if we're gonna play it or not i don't know when does um, it come out it comes next out month? in like i think next month yeah because this is august right yeah, yeah. so september september and then is monster manual october i thought, I, I thought it was next year 
Oh, they, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know for sure. Let me find out. I feel like they moved all of them to next year and then they moved players handbook forward. That's wild. If they did do that, that's crazy. Um, yeah, it's just weird because it's like I don't really want to commit yet. <laughs> I don't want to commit until I have all three books. Um, well, there's there's some cool rules I want to take. might be waiting for a while. Yeah, I know. That's just crazy. Yeah. It's um, I know they did that with 5e. They kind of released one book each month at a time. We talked about it on the podcast. Like That's kind of weird, but it made sense for sales. Yeah. Um, so it's like whatever. But if it's like months afterwards, that's – I don't – that's ass my guy. I don't know. We might get one close to Christmas. I feel like that's a pretty smart move. But It would make sense if all three were out by Christmas and they were a bundle. And you could buy all three books and be like, Merry Christmas. Here's the new D&D books. Um, according to this website I've seen, I'll double check some other sources, mm-hmm. especially a official source. This is what I have right now. Player's Handbook is September 17th, mm-hmm. uh, and then followed by the DMG in November 12th. And okay. the Monster Manual in February 18th. Whoa, the Monster Manual got pushed to February. Okay. We get two of the three. Well, this year. M- maybe the game works still without having the new Monster Manual. It kind of makes sense. Well, yeah. Yeah, because if it's backwards compatible and stuff, it's like uh, the monsters don't need to change. Do you know what we didn't need for my follow-up campaign was a Monster Manual. Mm-hmm. I barely needed those. So... Honestly, the fact that Dungeon Master's Guide is coming out closely afterwards, I, I care about. I'm, I have a lot of high hopes for this Dungeon Master's Guide because of the way that Chris Perkins was talking about it. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And then um, I want to make new how to play videos. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. Um, I really liked making those videos and I'm excited that we're going to potentially get to make more. Yeah. Yeah. Filming mm-hmm. a video tomorrow from what I hear. Yeah, and uh, not a how to play video, but I'm filming a video tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Emma and I might run around in the woods. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but yep, yeah, that was that was the D and D section of the podcast. You did it, Spencer. You made it all the way through. Congratulations. Now I go night night. Um, I'm gonna go look at the questions at twitter.com. At twitter.com slash arcane arcade. You guys are down with that. I'd um, love that. This horrible picture you took of me today. <laughs> yeah. My eyes are enormous. Uh, according to dndstore.wizards.com, it, it, those dates are exactly the same. Oh, well. Okay. So we still have Monster Manual in February. And well, DMG you, and I'll get you that for Valentine's Day. November oh, thanks. or whatever. Yeah, Valentine's Day gift will be. Appreciate like, it. I'll get November that for 12th. you. Cool, 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 cool. November 12th. You'll have to wait till Christmas for that one. Well, yeah. I am at least happy that the DMG is, is out at least a little sooner because... There's a lot of core rules in the DMG that are important. So if there's a big changes that they've made, then what'd you say? I said you have to wait for that one until Christmas. And then Player's Handbook, you can't have till your birthday. Those are what I'm getting you for those days. Uh, yeah. Those are just my gifts? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. All right. Gotta wait. Easy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Look this horrible oh picture of me. You kind of you kinda look, look like... like Emma. <laughs> I do kind of look like Emma. That's, That's crazy. Weird. Emma does kind of have a small forehead and enormous eyes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and you have a big forehead and small eyes. Thanks. Uh, Gun Twirling Aficionado, which is Albert, yeah. asked, Windows has graced me with a very calming background, so I have to ask. Oh, here it is. It's a it's a castle oh. at sunset. Uh-huh. It's very nice. Um, uh, what kind of place would bring you the most calm or enjoyment for a vacation? Forest, mountains, beach, home, etc. Switzerland. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Spencer. I get really so many TikToks of just like the most beautiful areas of Switzerland. It's so pretty. It looks beautiful. It doesn't look real. It doesn't. It looks it fake. It looks fake. Yeah. But every I feel like it's a trick. Like I go like, there, they're wow. going to steal my luggage and kill me. And then I'm. Yeah. yeah. And then and they the, post. I mean. Like it's me. I'm having a great time. Let me see something. Spencer, you showed me a video of Switzerland. I was like, that looks really pretty. That doesn't look real. And you were like, they were neutral in the war. Yeah. And I was like, why is this an important fact? I don't know. <laughs> it's why they it's why they remain beautiful. They were because there was no war. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Um probably New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand. It's up, um, it's up there. If not there, then probably uh staying at home because I guess I'm just boring like that. But 
I don't believe you. You want to go live in the woods? I do like being in the woods. It's yeah. fun. It's a good time. What about you, Pepper? Where are you going? Probably somewhere snow, I think. Snow? Yeah. Switzerland has yeah, snow. Yeah, that's cool. Not bad. I was trying to figure out the size of Switzerland. Oh, um, it's small? <gasps> incredibly small. The trash truck. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what state it's trying to compare it to. Like, oh, it's know. comparing it to a state in the original 13 colonies. Like, like one of those oh. small ones. Okay. So, I don't know what fucking state it's trying to... It's not very large. Wow. Probably smaller than Virginia. Oh, really? So, a country small. smaller than Virginia, I would imagine it's pretty nice. That's true. You got what? A park to deal with? Yeah. <laughs> one park. Yeah, you got one park, one it's, airport. It's like two LAs. It's, it's two there, LAs? Not in, not, in si- not in size, but in people. Wow. There's 8.7 million. That's, That's still it? more than Finland. Wow. I think California's like 41. That's mm-hmm. wild. It's so mm-hmm. small. Yeah. Very but yeah, I imagine that that would be like a wonderful little picturesque place. Yeah. I'd want to go back to Finland again. That was fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but going to the beach is also nice too. I yeah, I just want somewhere that's not hot. That's mm-hmm. all I care about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would love to go to Rio, but I think I would be miserable. Yeah. I want to see the big Jesus. The big Jesus. The big Jesus. Uh, Storm asked, Bazinga is the verbal component for your new spell. What does that spell do, and which of your characters keep it prepared at all times? It summons Jim Parsons, unfortunately. (laughs) With that laptop like this. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's doing that. Whoa. It, so it, it's like an illusion? Or is it no, it's him. Happen? Whoa, you conjured He's confused. Him? Yeah, and he's scared. He's always confused. He's like, help, help, where am I? Yeah. Wait, is Jim Parsons the actor? Yeah. Wait, he's <laughs> like, what am I doing here? <laughs> where am I? He not, yeah, not Sheldon Cooper. Jim Parsons, <laughs> the actor. Kind of the same thing, but it does young Sheldon instead. Oh, yeah, I don't know I don't his know why is. I thought Jim Parsons was like his character's name and that like Sheldon or young Sheldon was like some sort of stage name for his character <laughs> and that the character in Big Bang Theory's name is Jim Parsons. No, it's Sheldon Cooper. Right. Sorry. Yeah forgot wild yeah um yeah i guess that's what it does okay who's casting that which of my characters gonna cast that? yeah probably um Amara. no probably lark the, that's funny that's <laughs> really, really funny, funny. Uh, that, that that really funny. Well, well. if yeah. bridge tara and lark could all cast that that yeah. would be great the the fuck is this guy? yeah yeah um like, i don't know oh, he's just here now he's just here now what a whimsical place He's just, yeah, he's just like, wow, this is great. I'm so glad I'm here. Can I go home? And no. Like, no. That's a, you no, you live here. I can't send you back. Be an NPC of that of a real guy yeah. from our world <laughs> for like 40 <laughs> episodes. <sighs> um, Colleen is seeing Dan and Phil ask, hey, gang, what would you say is your favorite TV show no one has seen? Mine is Gallivant, a musical comedy fantasy show which only which lasted only two seasons. I think you guys would like it. Also, Craig, the album Screen Violence by Churches is oh my, my recommendation, Lord. but it's Chiverches. Chiverches. Which is a screen violence? Screen violence. That sounds cool. Uh, they have a song I like called uh, He He Said, She Said. Oh, what? A I've TV never, show that no I like That's cool. that nobody else has seen? Uh, I don't think there's one that exists. I am kind of a normie when it comes to TV shows, and I only watch things that are popular. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe something I watched as a kid. Could be. Yeah, but maybe. not now. But everybody, we all had the same experience. Every time I'm like, yeah, nobody ever watched Between the Lions. And it's like, no, yeah. we all watched that. It's like, okay. Mm-hmm. What was... I don't know. I, I'm yeah, just going to... Um, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. That's what we are. That's what Arcane Arcade is. We're kind of like an obscure TV show. We're like an obscure... Did you guys watch Ubi? Ubi? What? Ubi? Ubi? Oh, yeah. With the, the, with the little hand? Yeah. No. I, I, what is I, that? I, 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 I'd say I, I was a regular watcher, but you showed me that and I... Uh, <laughs> you remember? Yeah. It. Ubi. A regular yeah. watcher. <laughs> um, I don't know. You have an obscure TV show? I don't, I don't know either about obscure. We didn't have cable for like a long time in my Same. life. So, um, probably for a lot less of an altruistic reason yeah. than what you, probably why, why you didn't have cable, but I'm glad we didn't because it wasn't particularly, I don't know if I missed out or anything. You didn't have cable because 
because because for a less altruistic reason yeah i I bet your parents were like that's not a thing we're gonna do i'm like you know what that's good yeah Yeah. good my family's just too poor yeah (laughs) you know i feel like that was the probably the reason and they just said it was that oh either way it's it's the right decision yeah yeah it's the right decision i think um because fuck fuck cable television mm-hmm. you can have pbs and whatever on your fucking yeah get the bunny ears out your bunny ears the, you gotta try yeah. and get, in. <laughs> get the bunny ears and yeah. try and find your tv shows yeah. i, I have gotta no know, idea gotta know if school's canceled because of the fog gotta have the <laughs> what school's never canceled because the fog in corcoran it was canceled all the time because of the fog <laughs> oh, yeah corcoran maybe oh but that's where i grew <laughs> up <laughs> okay weirdo yeah i'm just kidding uh well i like my the, school was never canceled because of the fog yeah i, I like know one guy the, the, the one news anchor had to get up to go don't go to school yeah and then the whole town went to bed yeah <laughs> the guy, the guy went left. to bed yeah <laughs> oh. all, all the i just kept watching arthur time. it was like mm-hmm. school's not yeah. i'm not going to school we all went to bed at the same time yeah i don't know i don't think i have any unfortunately yeah it's hard i can't think of any show that i'm like i don't think anybody's ever seen this or one that's not hard to find like i think i really like the show called uh warehouse 13 it was an old sci-fi mm-hmm. not old like quite yeah. old for most people now um, show, but I don't. I don't even know where the fuck you'd watch that. Someone. Don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, Francois Anderson asked, "Is Twitter even fun anymore?" No, and it's not. It's fucking. No, awful. honestly, I'm. It's a hellscape. I say all the time, I'm one bad day. I think. I think today, tomorrow, the next this week, I think Twitter's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, been, there's nothing on every it. Every time I go on it, it makes me feel worse. I feel myself feel worse. Like, it, before I used to be like, man, I'm kind of in a bad mood. Yeah. I wonder why. Now I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. Why am I still here? Get off. Like, it's so bad. Yeah. It's so, it's like a drug. It's so terrible. My Twitter's great. Look, my, my, mine's not terrible. It's just, it's so fucked with ads and shit. Oh, and, oh really? Oh, yeah, That's it's, his it's TikTok. My TikTok has so many ads. It's sometimes. ads and lives. And then I keep buying the TikTok show. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to fucking give <laughs> TikTok. Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah. I, Lazy talks about all the time where I'm like, she's like, yeah, cultivate your thing. I was like, fuck, no, mm-hmm. no. I'm not. What's well, so good the algorithm then? Mm-hmm. Fuck that. If it's going to fuck me, I'm just going to leave it. I don't well, I don't, I don't, don't, don't want to put that much You can't into help it. it if you don't like believe it. And that's the thing with the algorithm nowadays is that you can't tell it. It will just mind read you. It Because fucking everything from YouTube to yeah. TikTok and Twitter and Reddit know what you look at what you linger on longer and then and then scroll away so even if you if you as a human being spend the time to read something the app knows and remembers Mm -hmm. and so that's why like all of our algorithms are like this because you genuinely don't care you have no need to go on twitter to look at beef or drama Mm -hmm. you go for beans and Mm -hmm. like art and it's so fascinating because i can't help it i see it and i have to read it and it's it's fucking frustrating like mm-hmm. i can't i can't move on and so colton's colton's always talking to me about this he's like i don't know why my tw- why i'm just always seeing the worst takes on twitter and i'm like i didn't have she the heart them. to be like bro because you're looking at it yeah because oh, you're because yeah. you want that's what you look at and it sucks and i get on my twitter and i see all these controversial hot takes and i'm like it's because it's because i want to look like what i look at it, it registers yeah. the view it sees me yeah. look at it and then i get out of there you yeah. can i can i talk about the thing that you always have on your tiktok like yeah, every night, yeah. every night we'll go through the TikToks we send each other and then we'll look at his for you page. And there's always those like, um, like five anime questions. But if you say the same <laughs> thing as me, you're out. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like an AI voice, AI voice of a yeah. guy in a Minecraft jumping video in the background. Yeah. And he's like, if you name the anime, then you're out. Yeah. Question one, name a character with green hair. Yeah. And I'm, and I don't, for some fucking reason, we watch them every time. My dumbass monkey smooth brain is like, Gah. and watches it every time. It's been like it's been like a week of it, so it's it's, it's a new thing. But it's so bad; it gets me so bad every time. And then the fourth question on every single one of those is always, "What anime profile picture comes up when you hit more and share?" And I'm like, I don't fall for it because that's yeah. how that's how you that's how you interact. Yeah. And also, none of my friends have anime profile pictures, yeah. so you're not gonna fucking get me. I always skip it. Yeah. Anyways, and before that stupid. though, it was like brain rot, brain rot questions. There, there was a, it's like, what can you pass mean? the brain rot AP exam? Question one: <laughs> Who's calling you at midnight? And it's like Quandale Dingle. 
And I was watching him with Spencer. And she'd be like, who's this? And I'm like, that's Freak Bob. And you're like, how do you know that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh God! Yeah, no. and uh, uh, it was—it's just stupid yeah. shit like that. Every yeah. app it falls apart a little bit because even TikTok's a little fucked right now for me. Where I'll like a creator, watch a couple of their videos, and then the next for you page will be a video from that creator. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And the next four yes. are reposts from someone else ripping their video yeah. with something next to it. And I'm like. Why not just show me the fucking clip from the... Ri- yeah. Why should we five ripoff accounts and one real account? There are three accounts right now that I'm 90% sure are AI because there is an app that you can go on right now that just you upload videos yeah. and it cuts them up and uploads them to a TikTok account and AI and uses AI to put in um, uh, subtitles. Yeah. Um, and... There are three accounts that are farming my YouTube channel and it's stupid. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to like go into TikTok and I have to like file like a copyright thing and I have to have like proof I own the video. And so I have to get this thing from YouTube and it's really stupid. And I wouldn't care because a few of them only get like a few hundred views and I'm like, I don't care. But then one of them will get like... 50 to 60,000 and I'm like this sucks. Yeah. This really sucks. And the I've like DM'd the account, I leave comments and like it there's nobody there. Yeah, they're just course. fucking farming it because then they'll get the ad revenue and yeah. then just they're just stealing content making money and it's just stupid how easy it is to do. So, Terrible. yeah, it's it sucks. It sucks, but um if I really wanted to go hardcore with it, I could. And uh they re-uploaded one of my ads which has Marcy in it and that's against the COPPA uh, 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 act. It's not mm-hmm. an act. It's a, it's a, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I could get lawyers involved and get like $50,000, but I'm not going to because that's a lot. And, but if, uh, unless they don't take it down, then, then it's like, <sighs> don't fuck with me. <laughs> I have the power of God and anime on my yeah. side. I've you're, heard that. I've heard that. And Quandel Dingle. Yeah. And Quandel Dingle and John Pork and Freak know. Bob. <laughs> John Pork's a funny name. Yeah, it is. I, I really don't know John I, Pork. I doubt the image is funny. It's but I, not. But I but the name's funny. It's foul. Don't sh- don't pull it up. Don't don't show him the clip. It is like that guy that was like talking about those ca- different cat names for fucking a couple months. I don't think I don't know what that is. Oh, it's, I guarantee it is. I probably just described it really poorly. Every every once in a while, my TikTok will just be in another language. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for half my content's in Spanish. Yeah, and I'm like. I understand enough of it to maybe get by, but the other half I don't. But so. it, sometimes it's not even Spanish. Sometimes it's like <laughs> that's John Port. He's calling. <laughs> He's calling. Pick up the All phone. Right. She was funnier than I thought it was going to be. John Port's a little funny, <laughs> but I bet if I saw it again, I'd answer? be upset about it. Would you answer that? No. Yeah, if he called you Fuck, no. at midnight, you wouldn't answer that. No, I would. I would. That's terrible. I would answer that. I would answer on Facetime. That's waste <laughs> time on the toilet. On the toilet. Wow, wow, that's crazy. There's a there's a, a meme that you sent me. It was like a text message like chain, and it says like it says like missed call. It says I'm on the toilet, and it says missed video call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh. Um, Zach Bread Wrangler asks, with the weapon masteries coming out soon in one D and D, what are <laughs> like nobody can decide what to call it. Yeah. We're all we're still calling it one D and D still, which is funny. Uh what are some homebrew weapon masteries you'd like to create? What would they do? I knew I know you essentially have some being used in descend right now as well. Um I will know more on how to homebrew it once I play around with it a little bit and I go, okay, what's missing here? Um, cause that's normally how I like to look at my homebrew. Um, but right now they all kind of do things I want them to do. The only thing that I could ever think is like one that like knocks people backwards, but they kind of have that one already. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, they have a cleave, they have a bunch of things. So yeah. honestly, there's, there's not a whole lot of things I, I really want. Um, but I, I, that's just cause I like the weapon masters. I think the weapon masters are really cool. Um, so yeah. No, I think they're neat. Yeah. They're, they're confusing, very, but they're neat. They are a little confusing. It's probably because we're stealing it from a post and we don't have the rule book in front of us. Um, but I think once we do, it'll make more sense. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. 
Um, yeah. Grant XVB asked, what are each of your personal favorite albums? And for Craig, if you like Discovery and Ram, you would really enjoy Outrun by Kavinsky. I think I think I know who that is. Look it up. I like Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge by My Chemical Romance. That's your favorite album? I like it a lot. Yeah. It's very good. Uh, I would have to say instinctually, uh, yeah. You're Awful, I Love You by Ludo. That one's also that very good, yeah. Um, I've also mentioned on the podcast before, but Providence by Poor Man's Poison I really like. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, uh, Dear Wormwood by The Oh Hillos is mm-hmm. also one of my favorites. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Quandell Dingle's calling. Hang on. Quandell Dingle's calling? Oh, yeah, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. High as Hope by Florence and Machine. Oh, yeah. That one's good. good. Oh, that good one's good. Album. That yeah. one's solid. Oh, my Lord. I almost played copyright music on the fucking <laughs> um, <laughs> We could cut it out. Uh, you're right. You're right. It's saved. <laughs> I, I, I cut out all the video except the three seconds. <laughs> you're like, fuck. <laughs> I only post a three-second clip where I play yeah. some oh, music. Man. Um, Capital Yo. Cities has, I don't want to say a new one, but new enough, called Solarize. That's Ooh one of my favorites that's cool it's awesome also uh kaminsky is rad yeah that's cool that's one of the like the original like um synth wave people that i got into Ooh. was uh akuma that red line the, yeah mm-hmm. and then um like the midnight dance with dead oh fuck there's so many i've i forgot about probably several but there's so many more good ones Oh, hey, the time this episode goes up, mm-hmm. Spencer's birthday will have been. Yes. Well, oh, that's true. It's on Friday. So actually during Eberron, we'll be like, yippee. So, yeah. uh, but in case you didn't know that, Spencer's birthday is on the 9th. So it is. Yeah. We'll yell at her in the Discord. Go. Also, so Montgomery John Ricky. Pork, by yeah, Ricky. Sarah John Pork and Freak Bub. What? Montgomery Ricky by Ricky Montgomery. It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Album. It's a, that actually is a fucking amazing yeah. album. It's, 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 it's kind of upsetting how good that yeah. album is. It's very talented. Ugh. <sighs> Um, Shani LaBulge asked, Hey everyone, how's your weekend? Also, Good. Spencer, you have two minutes to talk about Stardew. Go! I got this new Stardew. Bazinga! That's what, the two, that's what it said. Oh. Okay? Is it two minutes? Yeah. I, I can't trust them anymore. Like, okay. I know two they minutes now. Let you down. They took you to I, safe space. I got, this, I got this card again from City Hands. It's got little Junimos on it. I love Junimos. I might get a tattoo of Junimo. I don't know when oh, or where I'm going to put it, but it's going to be, yeah, I've been living in it and uh, Jack was staying over the other night because he's moving and he didn't have his bed in his new place yet. And I was in here playing Stardew Valley and he knocked on the door because he could see me through, because there's a little bit of glass on the door. He was like, I could see your yellow sweater. I knew you were in there. <laughs> I was like, cool. Um, Stardew Valley is just a great game. What have you been doing in it recently? Oh, I've been recording. Uh, I'm trying to do a hundred days video, mm-hmm. and it's taking forever. And then I lost a lot of the f- of the footage, and oh. then I was like, I don't like it what I'm doing. So I started over now, and I'm like day ten instead of day fifty where I was. Um, but it's going, it's going good. Valid. It's going yeah. great. Um, How many hours does it take to do like a few days? Uh, probably like I usually do like an hour or an hour and a half, and I do like probably like four days mm-hmm. just running around doing stuff it's pretty sick doing the meadows farm and got two little chickens um in my previous say that i was doing their names were chip and dip um chip and yeah dip. i thought it was really cute because i always put my favorite thing as chips because i eat a lot of chips um i want to talk about something that marceline <laughs> did the other day but you have to wait you, um, you still have 41, I have 41 seconds. seconds is meadow uh, farm the best farm no, I like the forest farm the most. Why is that one the best? Um, because your hardwood replenishes. Oh, mm-hmm. so then what's good about the meadow farm? You get chickens for free. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, Grandpa left some chickens behind. Wow. There's also bluegrass. You, you get two. Bluegrass? Grandpa's out there playing bluegrass? Yeah, he was. He planted it. Oh, he planted bluegrass. Yeah. Oh, grass that is blue. Bluegrass, He wasn't yeah. playing bluegrass. No. He's not out there like... With a no. harmonica, I mean, he's no. a fucking no. ghost. Um, the man can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, he comes back on the dawn of the third year. Did you that's, know that? That's the funniest meme is that grandpa being dead mod is, is him being like on a ping pong table. Yeah. Ding, ding, you, oh, ding, that's ding. it. What did Marcy say? Oh, yesterday Marceline was eating hot Cheetos with me, and you guys were like, "Why are you letting her do that?" And I was like, "She loves hot food." Yeah, she does. She does. Yesterday we, um, okay, so the story I'm about to tell is going to sound like really fake, 
Okay. Um, and I thought about just not telling it, but I'm like, whatever, I'll just tell it because it's okay. funny. But it's going to sound fake, and I assure you it's not. Okay. Because I have three other witnesses, which include Maddie and Sabin and you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we had Maddie and Sabin over because I wanted to watch Delicious in Dungeon with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, we watched like the first five episodes. And we were like, the kids can play upstairs. Um, their new baby, Primrose, who's like only, who's like four months old, five mm-hmm. months old, um, will just hang out and we'll just watch a few episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and the kids got bored very fast and came downstairs during like the first episode yeah and they proceeded to watch every episode with us which i did not expect i thought that they because just of how things have gone in the past especially marcy because marcy doesn't really like to watch stuff especially if it's unless it's her her shows yeah but marcy cuddled up in the blanket and was watching it with you Mm -hmm. and leland was not only watching it but taking it in and asking questions about Mm -hmm. it which blew my mind he watches the show for maybe like a couple of minutes and he goes, the monsters. And I was like, yeah, there's monsters. And he keeps asking his daddy, he's like, daddy, where are the monsters? And he's like, oh, there's no more anymore. They're not there anymore. And then he turns and he looks at me and he goes, they eat the monsters. And I went, you just summed up the whole show. Leland. Yeah. That's crazy. They're all laughing. And yeah. I was like, they eat the monsters. That's the whole show. Um, and, kept, and then he they, goes, they eat that one. And I was like, and it was like the one with the armor. And he yeah. was like, yeah, they're going to eat that one. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, and he kept reacting to me like, oh, and then uh, Saban like called it like a clam. And then he called it a clam. Mm-hmm. And then he kept asking, where are the monsters? Um, and then every time the dragon would show up, they'd all say uh, Marcy and him. Cause Marcy has a, dra- a book with a dragon in it. They would mm-hmm. go, it's a dragon. Ooh, it's a dragon. Yeah. Um, and then he, he was so worried. He was so worried about the monsters and where they were. Yeah. Um, he kept asking if they were going to eat them. And it was really funny. I was like, I can't believe he's like watching the show and taking it in. Yeah. Then they left after we watched like five episodes. And um, uh, we, we went to the store and then we came back home. And then Marcy went to the couch and she was like, the dragon show? The dragon show? And we were like, no way. Yeah. That's what you know this as and you want to watch it? That is crazy. So she watched like the first episode again by herself. Yeah. <laughs> well, with you. Yeah. Not I just by it. herself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was crazy. So um, did not expect that. Mm-hmm. Thought they wouldn't, they would just be like, whatever, they're mm-hmm. watching something. Yeah. No, Leland got invested. He had a good time watching it. That yeah. was fun. So they, the they... ghosts show up and he was like, that's scary and i was like no it's okay he was like oh, all right <laughs> they went upstairs took everything out of marceline's playroom yeah. like just put it on the floor kind of and then they're like all right we're done here let's yeah. go back downstairs it was so funny yeah. though we, i was just having fun just talking to leland about it oh the episode with the orcs he was saying they make that bread and i was like yeah they made that they bread and he was bread. like what's that and i'm like that's an orc and then the baby one would show up, and he's like, "That's a baby orc." And I was like, "That it, dude, that you're is smart, a baby orc, dude. Yeah. You're like yeah. two and a half, and you're so smart. Yeah. That's so crazy." He was taking in the whole show. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it was a lot of fun. Oh, um, they were arguing throughout the whole episode, and he he was sitting with me during yeah. that one. He looked at me, and he was like, "Why are they fighting?" And I was like, "I can't explain that to you." <laughs> he was yeah. like, "They're just they're just arguing." And he was like, "Oh, okay. Yeah. Where are the monsters?" And I'm like, "There's no monsters in this one." <laughs> Him three more years and you haven't watched Ava. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, From man. the staircase, though. No, no, no yeah. yeah. He, he has to be hiding. Yeah. Kind no, but they liked it. They did. To. Yeah, it was a fun time. They had a good time with the show. It was fun. Um, <clears throat> Your mom will always tell me when they watch something with Marcy, and she's like, she always tells me, like, oh, she was laughing out loud, which she never really does <laughs> when we watch something together. I'm like, what are you watching with grandma? That's so funny. That's so funny. But recently, Emma watched her because we wanted to go watch a movie. Yeah. And um, she put on like a an Olaf short. Yeah. It's just like a little six minute thing. And then today she was like, oh, I want to watch that. She pointed at it on the TV. So mm-hmm. we watched it and she was laughing out loud. And I was like, is this what you're watching with grandma? <laughs> a little short about Olaf? It was, it was just him. He was just enamored by summertime. And she thought his little head falls off and then he puts it back on. She thought that was so funny. That's really funny. Well, I mean, you think about it, that's probably the first time she's ever seen anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the only thing she laughs at is being tickled, burps, and farts. Yeah. Those are the three well, things she yeah. laughs at. That's like. about what I think a baby could comprehend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it tracks. Mm-hmm. Apparently, she's comprehending that that's the dragon that's show. That's the dragon which show. Which we did not call it. She no. called it that. Yeah, she, she saw dubbed it. it. She, she, likes, that's crazy. she likes dragons. She has uh-huh. a little book. About dragons. She wants to read it all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The sponges. 
Marcy, yeah. at, we would pause an episode and like, and the episode was about to start, and Marcy would be like, "Play, play, play," and we're like, "All right, we're gonna play the show in just yeah. a second. And then uh, it's the beginning where it's got the little mushroom walking, yeah. and Leland was like, "What's that guy?" <laughs> we were like explaining yeah. everything to him. It was so funny. Um, <clears throat> ugh, there's a bug. Yeah, there's a friend. Leland's gonna be like, "What's an angel?" Yeah. <laughs> Where's Shinji's mom? Where's Shinji's mom? Uh, right there. <laughs> right, you, you've already seen her. Yeah. Seen her a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Weezy65 asked, man, that House of the Dragon season finale, huh? I didn't watch it. I don't. Sorry. I don't watch it. But neither of us. Colton would, would be like, yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Back to me in a year. Maybe I'll Speaking watch Speaking of dragons, if you were to become a dragon, what kind of dragon would you be? Assume become one? Assume you're an adult dragon of whatever dragon oh, you would man. become. Uh, I want to be a. Mm. Mm. I'll be a green one. I like the blue ones. I like the black one. See, yeah. well, different. Oh, that's, that's a good one. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the fucking new one has, a, has, has like a skull for her face. Whoa. Which is cool. <gasps> that's cool. Which one? The black one. Ooh. Like the ass has burned its fucking face off. Oh, Yo, that's, that's awesome. I, don't know, that's, I changed my mind. I don't know if that's a reason. It just has like, it's more of a skull face, which is that's crazy. cool. I love like that. The way its body looks. That's great. I love that. Can I, I was thinking the black ones are yeah, really yeah, scary. Yeah, yeah, of course. You I want to be kitty. Marceline calls you, Tiamat. You have oh. passed the, the, the. I think think the only way you could be kitty is if you were a mother. Oh well. So, but so I think you're the only one qualified in this room. Yippee. Yep. Um, sorry, I, it reset and I have to go find it again. Oh, Twitter. Uh. That's the only thing that pisses me off about Twitter. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, it's gone forever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fucking bastards. You could be a fucking dragon from Dragon Tales. Oh my! The God. one with two heads. Yeah, the twins that are conjoined. Yeah. What? I just remembered Fart Buckle Sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh. I hate to say I, this, but that's it. Oh, I wanted to tell you something. Okay. The <laughs> offset works out because. Oh no! There's one more. There's one more we can do. Okay. Can I tell my story? Please? Yes, you can. Marceline is Go. obsessed with uh, "Joyride" by Kesha. Yo, she loves. She that is song. obsessed. It's a good song. It's crazy. She is she? We get in the car and she goes, "The song, the song, the yeah. song," and it's not like we've played it yeah. that much. He he played a TikTok and showed yeah. it to me that had the song in it, and yeah. she was like. That's it. That's it. You know that animation where it, it was with a star in? She watched that oh, yeah. like eight times. Yeah. It's um, solid. And then she wanted to listen to it in the car. And the other day when I went to Dutch, but with just me and her, mm-hmm. uh, she was genuinely throwing an enormous fit unless I played it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, we're not listening to it. You get over it. And But she just was still upset like yeah. after 15 minutes. And I was like, fuck, fine. And I just yeah. played it. Yeah. Babies like Polka and fucking EDM. Yeah. And that yes, song has yeah. both of it. Yeah. It's both, yeah. Every time that song starts, I think it's Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. yeah. No. It's solid. It's Kesha. The yeah. song's fucking crazy. It's good. The song's fucking... That's the thing I was talking about before. I could just enough for if I meant thing. I, I, I don't particularly hate the new Eminem album, but I yeah. do think what he's doing is kind um, of boring and yeah. kind of washed out because he did like groundbreak a bunch of shit like yeah. uh, in his time yeah but now there's way more people doing other like pushing envelopes yeah that have a much more important space like kesha like chaperone yeah. like um charlie xcx yeah. like even by uh Billie Eilish, she like discovers her new like identities yeah, yeah. that's great we don't need it's fucking more a, of a the big same. old white rich yeah. man to come in and say he hates blind people. Yeah. You're not pushing yeah, envelope. I don't know. It seems like you're cashing a check. And yeah. I, and, and you're taking the camera away from artists that are like really doing some crazy shit and pushing some boundaries that need to be pushed. And he's just doing the I Fortnite the, yeah. dance on some on some right wing conservatives. Yeah. Which yeah, I'm all I, about, but it, I think I don't think it's particularly. The good. weird thing about it is that like I feel like he was like self-aware yeah but not to the level of like actually being self-aware like he's like haha everybody's gonna cancel me and it's like no this is just kind of cringe <laughs> like yeah. that's what it is man yeah. it's not like we it's not like everybody hates you for yeah, this I, I it's like I, I think generally the reception i've seen is just like this is kind of weird <laughs> yeah yeah i want to be clear that I, I, don't, I don't think what he's saying is like I mean, what he's saying is outwardly insensitive, I guess, but like I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad because of that. 
because he he is being it's a parody of stuff he's like uh, this is what yeah. Marshall Mathers would look, would look like now yeah of course and what he's doing so like I don't give a shit about that but I do think that he's just kind of I think cringe is a good way to say it yeah yeah it, it I feel like there's just a better way to do it I don't know it just I, I, everything that I've seen from it I'm just like okay <laughs> it's, it's a bigger conversation for sure because I almost wonder to some degree and I challenge like people to think about it is that I wonder if he's pushed so many boundaries we expect him to be on the fringe Mm-hmm. so now this is him kind of wrapping himself back into mainstream and then like showing his ass intentionally and people mm-hmm. are like that's boring and you're like yeah. what do you mean it's boring I, said, I laughed at a blind person you're like yeah we expect you to laugh yeah. at a blind person like yeah. we expect that from you yeah so I wonder to what degree if, he, if there's no uncharted territory when it comes to shock value when it comes to like I mean after some of the shit he's done before yeah i mean like, especially that doesn't shock anyone no especially in the reference that he's making to that era of his life yeah of like the slim shady era yeah crazier shit than what he's doing now like way crazier yeah. things so i'm just surprised like it, it almost feels like a watered down parody of himself yeah which i guess is kind of the point but i just feel like i'm glad that the, the, the larger reception was like this is goofy and then they moved on to other things because i would have yeah. hated if that would have been like my algorithm for like two weeks and people are like this is really good and i'm like i don't it's not terrible but mm-hmm. i don't think it's particularly good and that's the thing is it's like that that is likely the point but that's kind of just a weird point you know it, mm-hmm. i don't know if i just if if that's what it is it's just i just don't get it i'm just like meh yeah mm. um <clears throat> we do one more question. this last question from sam mcguire says are there any changes to the structure of writing of it or sorry is there are there any changes to the structure or writing of adventure modules that you were hoping to see in the new edition of d Uh Not really. There's only one thing that I, I kind of wish were in the books. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of did it in the Questonomicon, and I, I want other books to do it, which is if there's a section that as a writer, you're like, this is a little bit confusing and maybe not like easily explained. I want there to be a text blurb that kind of breaks the fourth wall and talks to the DM directly and says, this is kind of what I mean by this, but it has to be written in these rules here for it to make sense. But here's like the text that kind of explains it. Mm -hmm. So you can, that gives you like a gist of what it is. I kind of wish there was more of that. Um, And just ways that they kind of uh, put it, put things in layman's terms. Um, They kind of do that a lot in Icewind Dale, but they don't like, they don't like make a thing out of it. They just kind of go, simply put, it means this. And it's like, that's really nice. I yeah. would love to see more of that. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm afraid that I am too used to the structure of what has been already established for me to want something to change so drastic, too drastically. Um, I would just sometimes not want to read a chapter or a section like four times to try to understand what it's trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, Oh, now I get it. Okay. Or if they would reorganize information. So like, give me all the important information in the context first and then give me everything else because I don't like reading it and then getting to a section later. And then it's like this plot twist changes what was established up here. So if you skimmed it and didn't read this down here, you're fucked when you run it. Yeah. Yeah, that's my thing. No, I agree. I don't think I've read enough material to actually have like really big, like in-depth analyses. But I do think that, I think it's high time that I think we should, if we buy a physical book, which is probably, uh, to admit, this is probably the larger archaic way of buying a book now, should include at most a discount, but at, or I should say at least a discount, at most an entire free digital copy. Oh yeah, duh. the books are sixty dollars. They should allow you to have a physical, a digital copy as well. Well, they they like don't the have an excuse anymore it. because they yeah. own the D, they own DD Beyond now. Yeah, yeah. Before um, they did because it was owned by a different company, but now it's not. I think I think Bullshit. you should be allowed to, or at least some fucking kind of discount, a ha- half off, yeah. something. Yeah. Um, and I don't like that they gatekeep stat blocks. If you know, if it's the book is if a, an adventure is going to reference a stat block, provide the stat block. Yeah. yeah. You can have it in the glossary. It doesn't have to be in the section provided, but don't assume that someone that bought a book then has the monster manual. Yeah. Yeah. Which of the, like the four core uh, of the three core rule books, because I always say that you should buy the game as like a group anyway. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest sell for someone to go. This is a group book. It's not really a group book. Mm-hmm. It's really the DM's book. Mm-hmm. And if you, it puts like the, the, the cost on their head a lot. And I think that if adventurers are going to assume you have the book to run it, they should assume you have the player's handbook and that should be enough. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Put the staff block in the damn book. Yeah, for real. Um, I mean, it. 
there's been a lot of theories I've seen people talk about that they think that they're really trying to go digital only and like the book things are just kind of like a novelty me. thing. But yeah, one surprise me. Eh, I, I, I like physical media. I like having it, you know, so yeah. it, it definitely feels that way with some other ones, but they've done a good job at kind of wrapping it all together. Like Wild Beyond the Witchlight, for example, they have a lot of character options in that yeah. book. And they have like spells and stuff. It's cool to have that wrapped into an adventure book already, but it is also kind of like an expansion that you would buy for like like a digital like purchase. Yeah. But I think that's kind of the way to do it is you kind of wrap it all into one. So it's like, well, then it's it benefits everybody. You guys yeah. get player stuff, I get DM stuff, mm-hmm. and also I should get the stat box. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, yeah, totally agree. No, I think makes a lot of sense. It doesn't surprise me if they went completely digital. Printing is an incredibly expensive process, mm-hmm. and they get so much more money by not printing. They, yeah. they, 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 of the sixty dollars, they probably make an extra twenty just not printing the book. Yeah, I mean the digital copy is half the price of the, or it's, I think it's even less. The books are like what sixty bucks, fifty, mm-hmm. sixty bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The digitals are like I think twenty or thirty. So, but it still, it's yeah, you're 20, paying 30, eighty bucks. 20, 20, 30 pure profit. Yeah, that's yeah. not what they're making on a physical book anyway. No, mm-hmm. no, they're making half their profit back. For for nothing, yeah. no no material cost, nothing. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous, especially selling a thing that people could arguably not even own physically. Yeah. So, and with other that that's why I feel like they're trying to do all this map stuff with DD Beyond as well because they're trying to make it more worth it. Because at least with Roll Twenty, I'm I know that when I buy it, which is already discounted, that I'm getting a lot out of it. Because if I buy the Roll Twenty of Icewind Dale, I'm not only going to have the entire book, but I'm also going to have a roll 20 pages is going to have all the maps set up where all the minis go and the, all the lighting is done yeah. and all of that is like ready. You can just throw your minis on it and go. That's nice. But you don't get that with D&D Beyond. You just get the book. Yeah. Now they're like, well, you could kind of have maps and they're we're working on like this 3D map terrain thing, yeah. which is insane, but I feel like we won't see for a while. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. Hardly function. Yeah, we, we might be looking at D&D maybe 10 years from now, but if I know Wizards, if they start an idea, show it, like it, and then it kind of, yeah. dance away into obscurity yeah. yeah exactly so um yeah but um yeah it needs to be more worth it otherwise it should either be free or like severely discounted to get the book also on dd beyond it's so fucking annoying yeah see if it's only if it's only half price anyway you should you buy the physical book you should be allowed to have it yeah, yeah. that's just how it should be yeah yeah but um well see you in the bonus episode yep.